Tu la facevi. This is a serious one here, yeah? no laughing. Because it's gonna be a, a cultural it's gonna be a cultural event. Okay. Alright? Mm -hmm. Far away. I'm trying to make it so that we both sort of like You have to you have to move a little bit behind me there so you get in the thing as well, yeah? Okay. Right. I don't know whether this is the best version of it, but let's have a look and let's see if I can find a different filter that'd be more like it. How about that? Sounds good. Sounds good or looks good? Looks good. Right then. Okay. So sorry for being a stickler about that. Not a problem. So um Unfortunately, it likes to take a lot of spaces. So I don't know why. Can't I get rid of some of these things at the side? No, yeah. because they're all attached to the one program. Well, I don't need I don't need bam, do I? I don't need bam coming all over the place or firecrackers going like that or birds flying across the screen like this. What do I need any of that for? I don't want to have poppers sort of popping graffiti over us the whole time, and I certainly mm. don't want any of that stuff coming along. And I'm not going to be singing either, so I don't know why they why we need that. And it's not going to be my ideas uh, or your ideas because it's all going to be like that. And all it is is poetry. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I'm telling people off or anything like that. I don't need this wagging finger. So I don't need the whole stuff that's on the side there. Okay. Fair enough. And I don't need to have any special mm -hmm. effects or any of this other rubbish either. It's just kind of in the way. What I want to do is a special reading. And I haven't prepared this. Just, you gave me the idea a second ago just by talking about Alexander of Macedonia. I just have to film and it immediately goes on. Hello? Еще нет, я сейчас приеду. Дряники, ну давай, полчаса я приеду, за полчаса я хотел читать поэзию на интернете. Ну да, давай. Я полчаса буду здесь, потом я приеду. Па. It's, it's all got loads of hypertext in it. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take all that hypertext off, get rid of it, again, get, get rid of it, copy it, get something up like the simple the, the text. What is it? What are these programs that it has everywhere? Oh, where do I find all old programs? I'm not used to this. There you go. Where's text? It's under. You have to look under. Uh, accessories. Yeah, accessories for Notepad. And, they are... and I hope it doesn't come through with. That's more like it. Then I haven't got the. Uh... And so, what is this supposed to be about exactly? This well, I know it's difficult, isn't it? It's reload all frames. What's all that about? I don't really want a bit. I don't want to have this in a frame. I, want... I don't really want to have it as a frame. I don't like it that way. I'm going to take. I'm going to pick a different version of it because I can't do it that way. Well, what really, really interests me about history is how these people actually conquered. That's more like so it. So much of the the Europe. And well, they they did it by the, the, how how did they conquer so much space? I think they did it by killing a lot of people. Yeah, but for what? For what reason? To, for just for the empire? For a power? Or, I mean, that's all I hear all the time. No, for the kick, for the Augenblick. That's all the reason why they did it. The what? They just did it for the, for, for laughs. They did it for their jollies. They killed kids. a lot of people so that they'd get a lot of power so they could feel good. 
What's it all about? I mean, it's all about power and sex, isn't it? And money and security but and meaning. This... But, but people sacrifice the sort of quest for meaning in order to, to simply gratify themselves with power and other and sex and money and other carnal things. But I find that Alexander, his story tells that he he wanted power and mm -hmm. to be authority, but at the same time he didn't want the people to suffer. So he, he included all the races of the, and cultures of the world into one group, but he actually uh, he he wanted them to be a part of his army. So it doesn't make any sense. You're not in, you're not in shop properly. Why would come. you want to? Why would you want to? first killed those people and then, then put them as part of your empire. It doesn't make any sense. Well, look at what Napoleon did. He, he didn't particularly want to kill the ordinary man, man or woman, but that's the way it worked out, yeah? He just killed the heads of states of those countries and then... Well, she, he didn't actually go about killing people deliberately. He went about setting army against army, so of course it was involved in killing people, but it wasn't uh, personal, as it were. Whereas uh, you get other people made a personal quest to kill as many people as they could, folk like Hitler and Stalin. Should we do? Are we going to do this or not? Sure. Yeah. The wasteland. That's what. We, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's by T. S. Eliot. Okay. So let's get nice and serious. I found a better, a better version of it, which isn't all you know blue squiggles everywhere. So T. S. Eliot, 1888 to 1965, The Wasteland, dated 1922. The Wasteland. Nam sibilam quidem cumis ego ipse oculis meis vidi in ampula pendere, et cum ille pueri dicerent sibila ti thelis, respondabat debat illa apothanin thelu. The burial one, the burial of the dead. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dried tubers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Starnberger Zee with a shower of rain. We stopped in the colonnade and went on in sunlight into the hoof garden and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Bin gar keine Russin, Stamm aus Litauen, echt Deutsch. And when we were children, staying at the Archdukes, my cousins, he took me out on a sled. And I was frightened. He said, Marie, Marie, hold on tight. And down we went. In the mountains, there you feel free. I read much of the night and go south in the winter. What are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man, you cannot say or guess, for you know only a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock, and I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Frisch weht der Wind der Heimat zu, mein irisch Kind, wo weilest du? You gave me hyacinths first a year ago, they called me the hyacinth girl, Yet when we came back, late from the hyacinth garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak and my eyes failed. I was neither living nor dead and I knew nothing. Looking into the heart of light, the silence. Oh, don't leer das mir. Madame Sosostris, famous clairvoyante, had a bad cold. Nevertheless, is known to be the wisest woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drowned Phoenician sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Look, here is Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Here is the man with three staves, and here the wheel, and here is the one-eyed merchant. And this card, which is blank, 
is something he carries on his back which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man, fear death by water. I see crowds of people walking round in a ring. Thank you. If you see dear Mrs. Equitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal City Under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge. So many, I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet, flowed up the hill and down King William Street, to where St Mary Woolnoth kept the hours with a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew and stopped him, crying, Stetson, you who were with me in the ships at Miley, that corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, hypocrite lecteur, mon semblable, mon frère. Two, a game of chess. I don't know if you fancy taking over. Sure, why not? You want to take over? Okay. The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on the marble with the glass, held up by stands, I oh, sorry, I should say standards, wrought with fruited vines, from which a golden cupidon peeped out, and another hid his eyes behind, behind his wing. Doubled the flames of the seven branched calan, calan, was it calandabra? My eyes are very sore. Okay, candelabra, maybe I'll do it if you like. If, if your eyes are sore, I don't want to put you to any kind of pain. A reflecting light upon the table as the glitter of her jewels rose to meet it. From satin cases poured in rich profusion, in vials of ivory and coloured glass, unstoppered lurked her strange synthetic perfumes unguent, powdered or liquid, troubled, confused, and drowned the sense in odours stirred by the air that freshened from the window. These ascended in fattening the prolonged candle flames, flung their smoke into the lacqueria, stirring the pattern on the coffered ceiling, huge sea wood fed with copper burned green and orange, framed by the coloured stone in which sad light a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantle was displayed, as through a window gave upon the sylvan scene, or as though a window, pardon me, gave upon the sylvan seal, seen the change of Philomel by the barbarous king so rudely forced. Yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues, jug jug to dirty ears and other withered stumps of time were told upon the walls. Staring forms leaned out, leaning, hushing the room enclosed. Footsteps shuffled on the stair, under the firelight, under her brush, under the brush her hair, spread out in fiery points, glowed into words, then would be savagely still. My nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak! What are you thinking of? What thinking? What? I never know what you are thinking. Think. I think we are in Rat's Alley, where the dead men lost their bones. What is that noise? The wind under the wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head? But oh, that Shakespearean rag, it's so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? Shall I rush out as I am and walk the street with my hair down? So, what shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? 
the hot water at ten, and if it rains a closed car at four, and if we, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, and I didn't weep mince my words, I said to her myself, hurry up please, it's time. Now Albert's coming back, make yourself a bit smart. Do you want to know what you done with that money he gave you? Get yourself some teeth. He did, I was there. You'll have them all out, Lil, and get a nice set. He said, I swear, I can't bear to look at you. And no more can't I, I said, and think of poor Albert. He's been in the army four years, he wants a good time. And if you don't give it him, as others as will, I said. No, oh, we're there, she said. Something of that, I said. Then I'll know who to thank, she said, and gave me a straight look. Hurry up, please, it's time. If you don't like it, you can get on with it, I said. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, it won't be for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique and her only 31. I can't help it, she says, pulling a face, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off, she said. She's had five already and nearly died of young George. The chemist said it would be all right, but I've never been the same. You are a proper fool, I said. Well, if Albert won't leave you alone, there it is, I said. What do you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please, it's time. Well, that Sunday Albert was home. They had a hot gammon. They asked me into dinner to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please, it's time. Hurry up, please, it's time. Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Good night. Ta-ta. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. That's from Hamlet, that bit. Mm -hmm. um, the end bit after a sort of quite banal conversation. Three, the fire sermon. Mm -hmm. The river's tent is broken. The last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown sand unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet Thames run softly till I end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends or other testimony of summer nights. The nymphs are departed, and their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed, have left no addresses. By the waters of Le Mans I sat down and wept. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud nor long, but at my back. In a cold blast I hear the rattle of bones and chuckles spread from ear to ear. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank, while I was fishing in the dull canal on a winter evening round behind the gas house, musing upon the king my brother's wreck, and on the king my father's death before him, white bodies naked on the low damp ground, and bones cast in a little low dry garret, rattled by the rat's foot only year to year. Yet at my back from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors, which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Porter in the spring. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and on her daughter, they wash their feet in soda water. Et où ces voix d'enfants chantant dans la coupole? Twit, twit, twit. Jug, 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 jug. So rudely forced. Terreo. Unreal city. Under the brown fog of a winter noon. Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant. Unshaven with a pocket full of currents, CIF London, documents at sight. Дорогая, да, ну я, я, теперь я должен буду да, так направо начинать заново, потому что ты в середине этого это читания поэзии звонила еще раз. Ну хорошо, но э, все-таки я, я, я имел бы хороший фильм, но сейчас я не имею свежей еды, а, но я также не имею фильм без телефона. Окей? 
Это же культуральное, культуральное читание поэзии. Человек не только может жить из еды, но надо немножко культуры также. Ну, пока. CIF London Documents at Sight asked me in demotic French to luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel followed by a weekend at the Metropole. At the violet hour when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi throbbing, waiting. I, Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives, old man with wrinkled female breasts, can see at the violet hour, the evening hour that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea, the typist home at tea time, clears her breakfast, lights her stove, and lays out food in tins, out of the window perilously spread her dying combinations, drying combinations, touched by the sun's last ray. I've lost it, haven't I? I've lost it. This telephone call's completely kind of made me lose it. I've lost it. I've lost the plot. I can't do it anymore. I've, I've lost it. I've lost the, I've lost the creative vein. Oh, let me know it's on. Oh, dear. Did, did this have a uh, complete point, though, where you're trying to... No, there's no point to this. It's poetry. Okay, so you just like poetry. Well, you tell me. It wasn't all that fun. There's, there's, there's 435 lines, and I got down to... Well, I suppose 220-odd. That's yeah, pretty good. Well, it's halfway, isn't it? I did half. Oh. Well, we'll do the other half another time. How about that? What interests me the most is um, history. It's just how some people uh, try to rule others, but they do it the wrong way by just killing others. Well, is there a right way to rule somebody? There's no right, there's no right to rule anyone. Everybody has a right to be here, but it doesn't necessarily mean that... Do they? They should be ruled. Everybody's got a right to be here. Okay. How do you work that one out? Because it's just how, how it is. We're all born, we live, but some people want us to live a certain way and we should not be forced to live a certain way. I mean, the only rules that were set were from God himself. So if we follow those rules, there shouldn't be any other rules that need to be followed. But in the case of people like Alexander the Great, he just built upon what his father already started and began, killing and pillaging and whatever. You see, on the one hand you say we, we shouldn't be ruled, mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's fairly obvious, isn't it? I mean, even the, the building behind your your head there is, well, it's the office of the president, right? well, the, it's the president's chancery, right? So it's right behind you, even just behind your head saying that you believe that we don't need to be ruled, is, is somebody there ruling right over you right this minute, just yes, behind your head. He's ruling a country, just like every other country is being ruled by somebody. Prime Minister, President... So how did that come to be then, if you say that we've got a right to be, everybody's got a right to be? Because it was created by a capitalist society. There's me with another ruler. Can you pass me that photo of... Yeah, Gorbachev. Yeah. That's me, shaking hands with Gorby. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stick it back on there? Sure. I still believe at the end of the day, trying to rule the, your, your people or a, a group of people is not right. Well, you'd have anarchy, wouldn't you? Maybe. Does that be all right? Either way, we look at certain systems in life that have been tried. Well, presu and presumably, I mean, if you have anarchy, then what happens is... What happens if you have anarchy? But you still have anarchy in a, a democracy. You still have chaos. Yeah, but what happens if you do get complete chaos? Then what happens? 
Well, people are not going to follow anything, are they? They're just going to... Well, some people won't. Some people, some people would then force other people to do what they wanted them to do, right? True, but... Uh, With a fair time, degree of brutality if they didn't accept it. Yeah, but there are also problems... So, so, that so, that so, that way. Yeah, but I mean, hasn't society the way that it looks today, hasn't it just simply developed into a more acceptable or a gentler form of the same old brutality that, that we had all along? Of course it's the same brutality. And every it's single a, ruler... organised brutality. Every mm. single ruler, I mean, if, if, let's imagine that you decided that you just weren't going to take it. You just weren't, weren't going to play anybody's game anymore. Let's just say, say I'm not going to play anybody's game anymore. I'm just going to, you know, do what I like. I just did whatever you wanted. Um, whatever came into your head. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you... Obviously, to an extent, you can do this as long as you obey the golden rule of not getting anybody's way when you do it. You probably could get away with it in this day and age. But, you know, and for most of humanity, people have had a fair ability to get on with what appealed to them as long as they didn't get anybody else's way with it. But let's imagine that, you know, you wanted to do something that, you know, was against the law, let's say. Mm -hmm. And, um, for example, you might say, well, I must go down, and I like the view from this particular point, I want to look at the lake. And it just so happens that, um, that the view over this particular lake, you have to sit in a place which belongs to somebody. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I'm going to sit here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I'm not disturbing anybody. I'm just sitting here enjoying a lake which God put there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and nobody else is there, but somebody notices that you're sitting on somebody else's property because that bank you're sitting on happens to be owned by somebody. Okay, mm -hmm. and that person comes and say, "Hey, you're trespassing," and you turn around and you say, "The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof; therefore, I can sit where I like." Yeah, all the beasts of the field belong to the Lord, and cattle upon a thousand hills. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were hungry, you would not tell thee, for the world is his and the fullness thereof. So, and, and you say, well, you know, this, the, this, the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God, and, you know, I don't hear God telling me that I can't sit here, just you, and so therefore, you know, sling your hook. The next thing that will happen is, um, um, he's going to go and, and, and sort of get the police or, or whoever to come and say, well, look, you're trespassing. Um, you have to be re forcibly removed. If you refuse to go, well, probably you'll be resisting arrest. And the next thing you know, you know, you'll be up for the, the court and you might say to the judge, I refuse to um, pay the fine because I don't believe I did anything wrong. The, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The seas and all that in them are. And so, you know, um, I could stand, I could sit by that bank all the time. And nobody can say that I can't. And I'm going back there the minute I get out of here. Mm. Uh, they'd probably lock you up. Probably if you and, don't move. The yeah, is, and if all the, and if you just tried to just go where you want to go and just sit there doing nothing to hurt anybody, you probably would find that you'd end up in a cell, one way or another. Well, at the end of the day, you say to yourself. Well, how did we arrive at that state of affairs? How did because we arrive? Because people want things. They want to own uh, land, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. And but who gave them that? Because it was who built, gave them that? Based land? on capitalistic society. It's well, no, it wasn't. There was, there was no such thing as capitalism when the when the first person decided that we own that that land. By what right? Because of the does that person think that he owns that land? Why does he think he owns it? Because he's had it for his family for generations, maybe. Maybe that other piece of land's been there in their family for that period of time. So therefore they have... Well, who gave it to them at the beginning? Nobody. So they just came there and sat there and took it, but you can't. Exactly. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? Why could they do it then and you can't do it now? There's no reason why you can't sit there still today. There isn't any reason. It's just that people the state claim to things that not necessarily are theirs. They only believe it's theirs because it's been in their family for yeah, eons. So it's just a matter of 
people say, stating facts or their own point of view because it was their family there first. That's all it is. So who's there first is the one who's rightful claim. And for me, I don't care whose claim it is, you can still be there if you can have a justification for being there. If you're born just like they are... Well, I mean, there. the justification is simply this, I want to be there, right? Exactly. So, you know, what justification does a squirrel need to run along that bank? He has... To, he doesn't... It doesn't bother him. He can travel from... Well, if, if he was in Germany and the tree was in half in Germany and half in Poland, he can run from both sides and nobody will say anything different. Yeah, well, he'd need to be a very aquatic squirrel because there's usually a river in between Poland and Germany these days. But, um, but uh, um, uh, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I mean, a bird, let's take a bird. It's easier for a bird maybe than a squirrel. Let's take a grey crow, mm -hmm. or a hooded crow as it's called in English. All right, let's say that, that I'm a hooded crow and I land on somebody's garden mm -hmm. and then I do a shit in the middle of their lawn. Okay? That is fine. There's no illegality there. Nobody would even say that the grey crow was a sinner for shitting in this person's nicely kept lawn. He might even enjoy watching it. Mm -hmm. Not too much, hopefully. <laughs> Pretty no, much. no laughter. This is a serious one. Oh, and, um, and, um, and basically, um, there's no sense in the fact that this grey crow, crow can do this. It can, whereas if you take a guy... You know, like, say, a person who's like me, who's done a full day's work. I started working at 9 o'clock this morning, and it's now 2020, like vision. So it's nearly 12 hours work, if you don't count the fact that some of it's just gone to doing creative things. True. But, um, you know, having, having had a... Having had a um, oh, I keep on putting my hand in front of your face, putting your face on the camera, I shouldn't do that. No um, problem, though. <laughs> Um, if you um, if you uh, um, if you consider that, I surely don't I deserve to go and take a dump on that guy's lawn? If there's, if the grey crow can do it, why can't I? But you see, if I do, if I were to go and do that, he would come out and he would want to be, he'd be waving rights and, and things in it in my face. He'd say, I'm the owner of this land. And if I said, well, no, actually, there's nothing, there's nothing that makes you the uh, the, the, the the, uh, able to enjoy the shitting on this lawn more than I can. It's not for you to alone, but for me. He, he then will bring out pieces of paper and, um, you know, cadastral books and, you know, bits and pieces of, of deeds and that that says, oh, this is mine, this belongs to me, and you can't be on it, you can't take a dump here, because it's my place and you can't be here. So, and, and the question is basically this. He wasn't sitting there dumping on his own lawn, so it was free for anybody else to do it. When the crow did it, he didn't object, but if I do it, he won't like it. And he can get me put in prison for that, Oops. or at least he can get me taken away and fined. And if I then say, no, I'm not paying the fine because I don't think I did anything wrong, then the next spot from them will be a custodial sentence. <laughs> what? <laughs> and so... <laughs> And is it fair? Is it fair? Is there anything fair about that? The great, you know, an animal, a, cray, a great crow, a hoodie crow, or a squirrel, can enjoy democracy more than people can. And it's not called animalocracy; it's called democracy. And demos means people, and yet we're the ones which are actually the victims of it, and not the people enjoying it. Very true. Anyway, it's I didn't sad. say I didn't say to my wife that I was going to stay behind to um, to discuss the weakness of democracy but to, to, to read poetry and we, I've stopped reading poetry so I want to stop this and go it's home. It's time to go home. Tears.